Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Palmy and in today's video we're going to look at deformers and how we can use deformers to create morphs and how we can save the morphs so we can use them again and again in Dash Studio. So let's get to it. So today we're going to look at deformers which are very close related to deforce but it's a different way of morphing. And so today we're going to look at deformers. Right, so I've got my object here, just a barrel. I'm going to click on my barrel here. I'm going to go to create and there's new deformer. You give the deformer a name if you want to. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Click OK. And then we've got these here, these extra options. So we've got the, I'm just gonna hide this so you can see the actual deformer. So here is our deformer, I'm just gonna zoom in. So the deformer base is this here, this kind of round circle here with the kind of pie kind of cut out bit, pie piece. Now this is the kind of default position. So when you, when you actually use the deformer on the Z translate, this is the actual Z translate. So if I did Z translate for this, for the deformer, it would come out this way towards me. So that tells you where the direction is of the Z translate. And the deformer, the actual deformer that we use is this here. It's this kind of like magnet type thing. And this kind of tabletop kind of thing. And this will, this is the actual deformer we use to actually make the kind of like morphs, the kind of, uh, you know, bend the geometry, move the geometry where you want it to. And the next thing that we have is the deformer field here. So the deformer field, and once I put this back on and zoom back out, you'll see, let's get out of the way. So this is the actual field here, this kind of red circular here, and then you got the other axis here, and then you got the other axis here, these red circles. So you can see here the different colors, you've got uh, yellow, and you've got orange, and then you'll see red. So just like we did with the rigging, you've got the different colors of um, how strong the influence is. So yellow is not that strong, orange is medium, and then red is like super strong where it will affect the prop the most. So for example, if I don't do anything here, if I leave everything as it is, I click on deformer here, and then I just do Z translate, and you'll see that the cesium magnet here moving. Now our base doesn't move because we didn't tell it to move. Our base will stay where it is. So if I just hide that, it's gonna stay where that is. Only thing's gonna move is this deformer here. This is the actual thing that does the whole magic, shall we say, uh, to say, does the actual morphing. So let me just put that back on. And now you can see it's deformed there. And the reason why it's deformed right at the area there, because that's the red point, that's the red area. Obviously you can't see it because the barrel's there, it's the red area, and that's why that's being affected the most. So what I can do is I can get rid of the influence. So I can go to the scale setting here for the deformer field, and I'm gonna scale it down. So it doesn't really affect it that much. So you can see it's kind of going down and we're scaling it. And you can't even almost see it now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna Z translate it so we can do it a bit more. And I'm gonna just make it a bit more smaller. And then I'm gonna Y translate it. So we can move the, the influence field wherever we want to. It's perfectly fine. You can't break anything. So I've got a bit of a bulge. What I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna go, go the other way. I'm gonna get my Translate to go the other way to make it look like there's a dent in there. So there we go. That's probably too much You can see look it's pulling the geometry here at the back and I don't want that So I'm gonna put my Z translate back a bit more. It's because my influence field is too big So actually what I need to do is make that even smaller my Influence field too smaller and then bring it out the other way here so then I can go back to my uh, deformer and do it a bit more if I want to let's have a look. How does that look? Let's have a look in IRA mode and there you go. So that is a bit extravagant, uh, probably a bit too much. So I'm gonna play around with that. So I can probably say that's probably too much. So I can get my deformer to go get back. And there we go. We've got a dent in our barrel. So I'm just gonna move this up a bit more. Okay, so there it is. So that's kind of like deforming really basics. So generally you would keep the deformer base where it is, you don't move it, but you can move it to really do kind of like uh, more advanced features, which I'll show you in a bit. I'm gonna actually stretch some skin like I did in this thumbnail and show you how I did that as well. So that's what we could do basically there with the kind of drum there. So that's a, a morph. We've basically created a morph here. Uh, we could go ahead and save that morph and I'll show you how to save that morph. If you hang on to the end of the video, I'll show you how to save the morph and how you can reuse it for uh, our character, for example, Genesis 8 when I do it now. So that's the basics there. Um, we can use the base. So I'm gonna move the base now. So I'm actually gonna move the base up and you can see uh, what the effect goes. Let's, get, let's come out of IRA mode first. That would be a good idea. Let's zoom up. So there's my base here. This is my base. I'm moving my base now. So I'm just gonna Z translate it. 
And basically what we're doing is we're changing the actual uh, origin, kind of like starting point of the deformation. So when I move it here and then I start using this X, Y, Z rotate, you'll see that things start to move. There we go. So we can actually, you know, use that as to help us with our deforming. So that's a bit of advanced features there and we can do that. So if I go back to my NVIDIA IRA, and you can see it looks a lot more better. And another tip I'm going to give you now is, although it looks a bit kind of like jagged edges and everything, I'm going to show you how you can get rid of the jagged edges. So if I click on the barrel here, if I click here and go to edit and then go to Ge uh, edit and then go to geometry and go to add smoothing modifier, that's smoothing it a bit. And then over here, you'll see for the barrel, we've got mesh smoothing now and it's on. And what we can do is turn the iterations up. Now be careful when you turn the iterations up, um, depending on how powerful your computer is, it will take a longer time to actually do the rendering and do this IRA preview mode. Because we've only got, because I've only got one barrel in here, um, you should be able to, you know, really put the smoothing iterations as much as you need to um, without actually causing your machine to slow down. So um, I saw, I'd like to start with something small, say something about five and see how that looks. Let's see how that looks. Does that look better or worse? You can see the geometry actually is a bit messed up there. Uh, so that's something you could play around with it. With there, there we go. Smooth it even more, seven, maybe 10 might be a good one. 10 is too much, as you can see, the geometry is exploded. So let's go back to seven. Okay. So that's how we can kind of make the our uh, morph a bit more uh, smoother. And I'm just going to sort this out. And we just got adult IRA preview mode. So let's see what's happened here. Just to move this back a bit more. There we go. And probably the influence field needs to go down a bit. That's probably what the problem is. And that is it for the barrel. That looks decent to me. You can't see much there actually, but there is a bit there, very slight, slight amount. And we can obviously move that back and forward as we wish to do so. Because obviously the smoothing is pretty high. What I can do is go back to my barrel and turn the mesh smoothing down a bit. So maybe five. And there you go. So that looks a lot better. And we can see the actual dent in there. So say if someone dropped a barrel, there's a dent in there. There you go. So something we can use our existing props. You can use the deformers on any props you've got. Um, you can even use it on Genesis uh, characters, Genesis 3, Genesis 8, whatever characters you have, male or female, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you've got dragons, if you've got whatever you got, it doesn't matter what it is, dragons, zombies, whatever, you can use it on that. I'm going to show you now how we can do it on what I did with thumbnail with the stretchy skin. So I'm going to do that now. So let me just set this up and we'll have a go at that. Right. So here's my Genesis 8 female character. And I'm going to create the morphs for her cheeks to make it look like she's pulling her cheeks on her skin. And the way we do that is exactly the same. So I'll click on my character here. I go to create, new deformer. You can give it a name if you want. I'm not going to give it a name. You probably call it a left cheek or something. Left cheek. Click OK. And then expand this. And then if you go down, you should see the actual deformers. Here we go. And the first thing I need to do is my influence field. So I want my influence field, uh, I want it, what I want to do is, I want it around about here somewhere where my fingers are, so somewhere around there. So I'm going to try and, I'm going to decrease the size of my influence field and have it roughly around here. So what I'm going to do is change the scale, really decrease that scale. Now I'm going to move it up. And as I move it up, you'll see that the redness will come up in a bit. There we go. And I'm going to make it smaller now. So it's getting smaller. So I need to use the Z translate to go ahead. And you'll see it start going red now. About there. So I need to translate it down a bit. So it's all a case about finding that spot. So I've got the red now, which is what I want. And now I just need to scale it down. So scale it down. Scale it now, scale it down. That's good. And the Z translate, I want to come out a bit more. There and scale it down a bit more. Now don't worry about the position, I'm going to sort the position out in a bit. And I'm going to Y translate it down. And a bit cross, so X translate. There we go, that looks good. Now I'm just going to scale it down. 
And there we go. Probably a down a bit more. If I'm being a bit picky, there we go. Okay, so I've got the influence field where I want it. And then I'm going to go to my left cheek, my magnet here, click here, and then I'm going to do Z translate. And I'm going to come out like that. There we go. Now, obviously, you've noticed straight away that the actual um, that the actual finger is in the way. That we can just move that out the way, so I can just go here and uh, bend it. No, sorry, uh, side to side. There we go. Okay, and then go back to my influence field. Uh, sorry, my magnet here, my left cheek magnet, and probably do a bit more. So I can obviously do X translate as well if I wanted to, so we can move it. Look, move the X translate. There we go. And if you want to see what it looks like, this is what it looks like here. If you come across, you can see that's what it actually looks like. But when we go and do the actual IRA preview mode, it looks pretty good. Once I get the IRA preview mode in here. So this is a HD um, Genesis 8 female with kind of like HD quality here. So that's why it's taking a while to do. And we can have a look there and it looks a bit weird, but we can fix that. So if we go back to texture shaded, and it is because this finger here needs to be higher up actually. So the bend on this probably needs to be up there a bit more. And the actual influence field uh, not the influence field, sorry, the, uh, the actual um, magnet needs to probably decrease a bit. So probably around about there. Probably something like that. So let's have a look at the area preview now. So like I said, you can have the fastest machine in the world with loads of graphics cards, but if you're using HD characters with very high quality hair, with a lot of high quality textures, it's still gonna be slow. And there we kind of do have our kind of like pinching our skin. So we can obviously go the other way and say, oh, okay, what if someone pokes your skin? So someone pokes it and they kind of leaves like an indent there, so we could do the same thing. All we gotta do here is just do the Z translate the other way. So we just go in, there we go, like a little dent. And then maybe move that across actually, like that. Maybe that's a bit too big because the influence field is too big. So we could probably decrease the influence field. So we want to only affect a little bit. And let us turn around and see what that looks like there. So there's a little dimple there almost, quite, quite a big dimple. Let's go into the RA preview mode. So we're just waiting for it to load and can you see it there very well not really you can't really see it there so you probably need to do a bit more so that's something to play around with there you go with deformers very very useful tool to create your own morphs and i'm going to show you now how you can save it so imagine you spent hours doing this and this is exactly what the uh, professionals do and the when you go to the stores and you buy the morphs um, this is how they kind of do it's very very similar so they go around, they spend, you know, many, many hours perfecting their morphs, obviously, and everything using different things such as deformers or probably using different things in uh, different uh, morphs in other applications and bringing them in. So it's a very similar thing. So imagine you've done your morph here and you're happy with it. You would click on here where it says on top of your, make sure you click on your um, item, wherever you morphed. So in this case, it's uh, my character. So I'll click on the top here on the parent and i'm going to go to the deform tab here now if you don't have this tab you'll need to go to window here and then panes and tabs and then deform which is there it is okay and you have that and then you need to do spawn morph here you click spawn morph and then you give it a name so you will probably give it i don't know uh left uh cheek dimple let's say because it's a dimple isn't it or something like that click okay all right and then when we go to our morphs here You'll see here, look, left cheek dimple. So when I decrease it or increase it, you'll see increase more the dimple. Now, when you do these morphs, they don't have the, um, the, the parameters ain't locked. So what you'll need to do is just reset that to zero first. Go to the parameter section here. 
make sure to use limits and then you can set here whether you want maximum or minimum I normally do minimum uh, zero because I only want I only want the item to go I only want the parameter of that morph to only be in a positive direction and not in a negative direction so I'll click accept and then when I do it now you'll see it'll just increase the morph 200 percent and that probably looks better there actually let's do a little preview again so that's how you can do your morph and whenever you use a uh, Genesis 8 character that morph will always be there for that Genesis 8 character only for female though because we did it for a female so don't expect this morph that you just created when you save it uh, sorry when you create it to be um, available for any other character it'll only be available for um, Genesis 8 female because that's what I did and there's the example there you can see a lot more effective there and uh, the one here, Paul Cheeks, is the one that I did, that I saved, so that's why that's there. So let me just uh, come back out of the texture anymore. Actually, what I've actually have done is I haven't actually told you how to save it. I've told you how to create a morph, so just uh, excuse me for that for one second. I'll show you how to actually save it. So I've got my morph there. I've created my morph, my spawn, my morph. Uh, I'm going to set that back to zero. And then I'm going to go to, to save the actual morph, sorry, so you can use it for any Genesis 8 female character. It will come up here on this section here, parameters and then morphs. You go to file, you go to save as, you go to support asset, and then you go to here, morph asset. And then here you would type in your vendor name. So my name, my vendor name is there. And then you would type in a product name. So something like, uh, whatever the product name is, I name mine face morphs. Which I'm going to do, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to share my face morph that I created, this Paul Cheeks one. Uh, make sure to check the link in the description box below for that. Um, the details, how to um, put that into your content library and how you can use it for any, it'll work for any Genesis 8 female character you have. So even if you don't, even if you haven't purchased any uh, Genesis 8 female characters, you can still use it on the actual default one, the, the one that comes with our studio, which is great. And then you would obviously go and then choose the morph. So you, you click on your, your the person, the item that you did the morph on, you click on morphs here, and then you would tick uh, that one that you just created, left cheek dip, and you click accept, and then that will save it to your library. And then anytime you load a Genesis 8 character or whatever character you do it on, uh, the morph, it will it will always come up here. So I'm not gonna click accept because I don't want that one, so I'm just click cancel. Okay, but you would click accept and then it will save it, and then you can load up another character and it will work for that character. So like I said, make sure you check the link in the description box below and I'll you can have that pull cheeks one that I created, the one that I did for the actual thumbnail. So you can have that morph and I'll show you, the instructions will come with it like the previous uh, one that I did, the um, the props that I created, the rig props. So there'll be instructions for that as well, how to do the pull cheeks, how to um, install it to your contract library and have a play around with that. If you like it, I would love for you to like use it in your renders. That'd be awesome. And you know, send me your renders when you've used it because I love to share it and show everybody, look, and look at the creative ways you've used the um, the pull cheeks morphs that I've created. So there you have it, some fantastic information there on how you can use deformers to create morphs and then how you can save the morphs and reuse them again and again for any figure or prop in your content library. And if you want to use the morph that I created, well, the link for that is in the description box below. And while you wait for next week's video, check out these videos over here, hit the subscribe button over there. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below as well. It's very much appreciated. And I'll see you in next week's video.